Hi, Purple Ella here. Today I want to talk to you about autism and driving. So my personal experience with driving was not straightforward, it wasn't a skill that I acquired easily and there were definitely some issues around driving which I would put down to my autism. So I thought I'd make a video and talk to you about some of the challenges that I think that autistic people can face when they are learning to drive my personal story with learning to drive and then some of the things that I think are important to consider when an autistic person is wanting to learn to drive. So looking at the challenges, I think one of the first challenges that I had when I was 17 and decided that I wanted to learn to drive was my relationship with the driving instructor. My driving instructor when I was 17 was very abrupt and very loud and very direct which sound like they could be good things but because I wasn't naturally very good at driving it just felt like I spent all my time with him either being yelled at or being told off. He was definitely not doing anything to increase my confidence levels and the lower my confidence levels dipped the worse that I got at driving and so it was completely counterproductive and I and I started to dread my driving lessons and just feel really really anxious about how terribly I was going to do this week and whether or not he would yell at me or whether or not I would forget to stop at a red light because he would do this thing like yelling at me because I wasn't very good at noticing lights and stuff which I suppose is probably a safety thing but he did have the dual controls but he would just yell at me like stop stop that used to really frighten me and it used to make me feel quite overwhelmed so those are things that were challenging there another difficulty for someone learning to drive can be anxiety and catastrophizing for me up until I actually had been driving for a few years I kind of had this sense that perhaps I shouldn't be allowed on the road perhaps I should be considering the rest of the world's safety ahead of my desire to be able to get from A to B in a car and perhaps I should be not driving because I believed that I was an inferior driver and that I would eventually have an accident and all I could see when I was driving was the future accident that I might have add in going onto a motorway and that would get even worse so catastrophizing and anxiety is a real barrier to learning a skill which does involve a certain level of risk it's really challenging so one of the other challenges for people to learn to drive are actual physical limitations imposed as a result of a comorbid morbid condition to their autism a lot of people with autism have other challenges that might be a barrier to them learning to drive. So in my case I have dyspraxia and I have a hypermobility spectrum disorder. Both of these conditions make me quite clumsy which doesn't seem ideal for someone who's going to learn and dr to drive. I also am not great with angles and I think this is because of my dyspraxia. So I, n I learnt this about myself when I was uh, an older teenager and I decided that I was going to become a pool shark. If I couldn't fit in maybe I could just be this deep moody girl who just like aced it at a pool table so I played a lot of pool over about a three year period with uh, at home with my dad and then also at university and I never got any better. So many people tried to help explain to me how I could get better and I am still terrible at pool. So I know that I'm not good at judging those angles, where to hit the ball so that it'll go off, so that it'll go in the pocket, which also applies to parallel parking. Well, parking of any kind, but particularly parallel parking, which, if you live in a city, is something that you will commonly have to do. I cannot parallel park unless it is a massive, massive space and there's plenty of room for me to go right back and then straighten up. I cannot parallel park if the space is just about big enough for the car. I just can't do it and then the anxiety comes into play in those kinds of situations as well because as well as trying to do a maneuver you are being like people will be waiting for you to do that maneuver so you build up anxiety about not being able to do it quickly enough which then makes the situation worse it makes it so much worse so those are the challenges that I definitely feel that I encountered when I started to learn to drive when I was 17 so now I'm going to tell you what actually happened I was 17 when I started to take driving lessons and this was a nightmare for a number of reasons. As I've mentioned already, the driving instructor was just awful and did not make me feel confident, secure or empowered at all in any way, shape or form. 
At the same time, I had just started to do my A-levels, so I was actually quite stressed and overwhelmed already by the demands of my life without adding in an extra challenging demand. And so I just didn't get any better at driving, and I also managed to fail the provisional, the, um, the paper test that you have to go, well, it's a computer test, what's it called, that part? The theory test. <laughs> I also failed the theory test. So before I'd even gone into my practical exam, I knew that I'd got to take another test. So that kind of sucked. So I failed the, the theory test and then I pr failed the practical test and I just didn't want to carry on driving. I just at that point decided that I wasn't good at driving, that I was never going to be good at driving and that maybe I'd just catch buses. So I gave up on driving, age 17 and then lived the next five to six years perfectly happy via a combination of public transport, walking, love walking, good for the mind, and lifts from other people. And then my uh, Mr Purple and I decided that we would like to have a baby and Mr Purple felt quite strongly and looking back rightly that I would have a lot more flexibility and freedom if I could drive once I'd got a baby. So, even though I did lots of going, No! Please don't make me! I don't wanna! Even though I did lots of doing that, Mr Purple managed, I guess, to persuade me that this would be a good idea. And then I heard about a, f a female driving instructor who had really helped a friend of mine who was really nervous about learning to drive. So, her name was Paula. So, if Paula ever happens to be watching, thank you. So, she taught me to drive and she took her time and she took me on a lot of really really quiet places at first and then we had the build up to being able to build up speed where she would take me to places where it was good for me to practice driving faster it's she approached driving in a very gentle we're not looking to do a driving test right now first today let's just try and be able to coordinate the mechanics needed to make the car go and then let's just drive around a really quiet housing estate and then let's and it was like step by step she gradually managed to increase my confidence and then hence my skills at driving to the point where I did actually successfully pass both the theory test and my driving test first time on learning with that new instructor and at an older age which is great because being able to drive, so I've been driving now for 15 years, and being able to drive has opened up a lot of experiences for me that as a um, person who finds crowds and noise and stuff like that and public transport difficult, driving has opened up a lot of experiences for me that I might not otherwise have had, and it's also definitely made my life a lot more convenient. So here's how I think it was possible for me to learn to drive and here's what I hope for in the future for other autistic people who want to learn to drive. As I have mentioned, choose the instructor, instructor very carefully. It might even be worth asking to meet with the instructor ahead of having a lesson for a initial chat to actually get a sense as to whether you are going to be able to work with this person. Make sure that your instructor is someone that you trust and someone that you feel will build your confidence and help you to learn to drive. I'd actually like to see some kind of a scheme in the UK whereby driving instructors can become autism friendly accredited maybe, like maybe they could go on a course um, where they could learn to be good driving instructors for autistic people where they're taking into account, account any potential sensory issues around the driving experience, that confidence building, that knowing about that high level of anxiety so that they can more effectively teach autistic people. Now I don't want there to be autistic driving instructors and driving instructors for neurotypical people. What I would like is that every driving instructor automatically has had a little bit of autism training and is ready to teach autistic people to drive. However, a step in the right direction would be some kind of accreditation scheme, like there is um, something like this attached to hairdressers and barber shops now, whereby they can display a sticker in their window and people know that they're going to get that extra level of consideration if they go to that barber shop. We would have a similar thing for driving instructors. They would get a sticker and, and actually, eventually, maybe everyone would join that scheme and so therefore the scheme wouldn't be needed. But in terms of making that change, I think that might be something 
if you feel like taking hold of that challenge, do you want to be the person to organise autism friendly driving instructors? Go for it. We all need to make these little changes. Whichever one you want to grab onto and fight for, if driving is your thing. Maybe you are a driving instructor and you hadn't thought about autism friendly driving instructors. And if so, you'd be in a great position to make this happen. Another thing I would say is important to consider is the time scale. Don't rush. I know driving is expensive. Driving lessons are expensive and driving is expensive. But if you can possibly make sure that you get lots of practice um, in your car or in a friend's car if that's possible but also just take your time and don't enter for any tests or feel the pressure of any tests until you feel really confident with the skills you're trying to gain and alongside that the kinds of things that would normally happen for anxiety management can be useful for the anxiety that you'll experience when driving so that's things like mindfulness things like routine think whatever your things are or check out one of my i'll put it in the um cards above one of my um anxiety management videos and take some strategies from there and finally if you actually don't have the motor coordination skills to drive a manual car don't drive an automatic i believe they are i've never have i driven an automatic not recently i think i have driven one but not recently but they are significantly easier from a coordination point of view and do the job of going from A to B just as effectively. So I hope that this video has been helpful. Have you had similar experiences to me when you were learning to drive? Have you passed your test? Are you looking to pass your test? Is it something that you've just completely given up on? Do leave me a comment in the comment box below and let me know your experiences because um, it's just really useful to find out what the autistic experience of learning to drive is. And if you like this video, please do give it a like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.